dudes, Dude Builder here. In this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about arrays in Zig. Okay. Uh, basically, an array uh, is a data structure that lets you uh, store several values uh, in a contiguous block memory. And uh, these values have to be of the same type. And the length of the array has to be known at compile time because the length is part of the type of the array okay so an array of three uh, u8s is not the same type as an array of two u8s okay um, here we're going to see uh, the example of how to uh, define an array with um, an array literal here uh, we have this variable um, constant a1 it's going to be uh, an array of five U8s. This is basically how you specify the type. And this is uh, uh, one of the ways that you can define an array literal. Is basically, once again, we have the type here, five U8. And uh, within the curly braces, we have the list of items separated by commas. Okay. So um, let's uh, go here to this other uh, terminal. Let's run this. And as you can see, the output um, it's showing us our array with our items. And also, arrays have a len property uh, or field that specifies the, the length of the array. Okay, it's pretty intuitive. Next up, we're going to see that there's another way of specifying the literal. And in this case, we're not uh, explicitly giving it uh, the length here because uh, the compiler can determine the length from the list of items that we're giving it here explicitly. Okay, So we just uh, specify an underscore here and uh, we let the compiler um, determine what the length is going to be from the list of items that we're giving it here. Okay, So if we uh, run this version of the program, there you go, we see that we have basically exactly the same result. Okay. There are certain uh, operators in Zig that will only work with arrays. And one of them is the double asterisk here, the star star. And what this does, it's like a similar to multiplying, it, it'll repeat an array, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're defining this constant A3, and it's gonna be uh, the, resu the result of repeating A2 uh, two times, okay? And uh, we print that out here. And uh, we can also use this mechanism um, to basically initialize an array uh, with a single value. What we're going to do here is defining this array A4, and it's going to be an array of five U8s all set to zero. And it's basically initializing it with all elements being zero. And we do that by basically uh, creating an array of one zero and then multiplying it by five. So the result would be an array of five zeros, okay? And we print that out. So let's take a look at that. And there you go, we have here an array of five zeros with the length of five, okay? And up here we have uh, the result of multiplying the original array uh, by two and then the, arriving at the length 10, okay? So that those um, operations can come in quite handy. As I said, uh, since the array length is part of the type of the array, the length must be comp time known. It has to be known at compile time. It can't be uh, a runtime uh, evaluated uh, value. I have an example here that if I uncomment it, here we're defining x as a variable. And uh, an interesting thing is that when you have a variable, uh, this is basically uh, a value that uh, is a runtime unknown value then, because the compiler uh, can't assume that this uh, variable won't change uh, later on in, in, in another place in the program, okay? So this basically, the difference is that if it was a constant, the compiler can arrive at the conclusion that it's never gonna change, so uh, that can be a com a compile time known um, when you give it a, a literal like we're doing here five but if it's a variable um, it could change in another place in the program so it basically turns into a runtime known value 
and we're trying to use that as the length here of this array and we're also trying to use it here with a, a repetition array repetition operator so let's see what happens if we try to run this and as expected uh, we have an error it's, it's telling us uh, cannot evaluate uh, evaluate comp time expression okay it's pointing to the X right there so uh, basically this uh, confirms that the, the array length has to be uh, comp time known now it just so happens that it's pretty common that you want to define uh, an array and you don't have initially all the elements as we've seen in, in the previous examples where we uh, specify in the literal the, the values that go inside the array you may not have it at the moment of, of defining the array so you can as with other variables you can define it with uh, the initial value of undefined and this basically separates in memory that space needed for this array in this case it's uh, an array of two bytes we're uh, creating that space in memory uh, but as with variables uh, we're assigning undefined so right now this would be uh, like garbage uh, data inside this array it's 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 just setting up the space so you can fill it up with uh, valid values later on and here that's exactly what we're doing uh, we're using the uh, indexing uh, operator uh, or the subscript operator as, as, as it's also known um, to uh, assign values to uh, the two uh, indexes in this array basically this is uh, an array of two bytes so we have 0 and 1 arrays in zig as in most programming languages are 0 index they, they start counting at 0 so uh, we assign 1 to the first uh, element and assign 2 to the second one and then we print out so let's see that output and here we go uh, we have the array a6 has the two elements one and two and the length two okay so um, it's really important that, uh, to remember as with any other uh, variable if you do use uh, this uh, convenience of undefined uh, you have to remember to um, only use those uh, array elements after they've been assigned valid values okay here we have an example of how we can define uh, multi-dimensional arrays in Zig, which is basically uh, creating an array of arrays. Okay, so we use here uh, in the type. This is basically saying this is uh, an, an outer array of two uh, elements, and the inner array, uh, those inner arrays, which are the elements of the outer array, are going to be uh, themselves arrays of two bytes. Okay. And we're using here the literal uh, with the outer um, length we're not specifying the inner length we are specifying because it's part of the type of that uh, array uh, element and here we're also uh, showing how uh, there's uh, another nomenclature for array literals uh, since the type here is explicitly uh, known for the items of this array we can use this uh, type of literal um, which is in Zig uh, known also as the tuple literal style we're going to be talking about tuples later on but basically um, Zig will know that we are specifying here that, uh, instead of a tuple it's going to be coerced to the array type because it's being specified um, right here explicitly okay. so as the elements we have here uh, an array of two bytes one and two and here another array of two bytes three and four okay and then we print that out and see how that goes and effectively we have here that a7 here is the array with two sub arrays as its elements the length of the outer array is two and here we have an example of how to access one of those uh, elements in, in a multi-dimensional array we just basically um, have like a path using the index operator or the subscript operator um, here we're basically uh, searching in the second element of the outer array the first element of that second element which is an array too okay and uh, effectively it's uh, the value 3 as we see right here okay and Zig also has uh, what's 
known as sentinel terminate arrays okay and what they, what this means is that as part of the array type we have uh, a sentinel value which is going to mark where the end of that array uh, is it's the sentinel is basically going to be at the index of the uh, equal to the length of the array okay so we specify that using uh, this type of uh, type nomenclature here where we have the length a colon and that sentinel value the value ha obviously has to be of the same type of the items of the array because it's like it's going to be the last um, item and here we're using once again this uh, tuple like uh, literal syntax to define the, the, the array with two elements one and two so basically uh, what we're going to have here is this array which, who, whose elements are one two and there's going to be the sentinel zero after the two which would be at index two which is uh, basically the last index of this array um, so um, let's uh, save this and another thing that we have to uh, specify here is that in a normal array you can't access that uh, index for the length equal to the length normally you can only go up to the index uh, that's just before the length but in, ter in sentinel terminated, terminated arrays that that length index is exactly precisely the the sentinel okay so um, let's uh, see the output here and as you can see we have this array it says the length is 2 and we can access that index okay uh, the a8.len would be um, 2 in this case and it has the sentinel value 0 okay if I uncomment this line here where we are uh, using a normal array which is not sentinel terminated and try to access that that index at the length we're going to see that we can't do that okay in a normal array it says index 2 uh, outside array of length 2 okay this is the, the behavior for a normal array but in the case of a sentinel uh, terminated array we can do that okay the, uh, the, the index at the length has precisely the, the sentinel value. Another operation that we can perform on arrays is uh, concatenation. Okay, and for that we have the plus plus operator, and uh, we can use this to concatenate two arrays as we're doing here. We're creating a new one called A9, and we're concatenating A1 and A2. Okay, um, so let's look at how that looks. And here we have that A A9 is uh, this uh, array with the ten elements which is basically the concatenation of those two arrays of five elements, okay? And um, here's an example of initializing, uh, once again, using the repetition operator, the double star here. But in, in this case, we're calling a function to get the value for that initial value that we're gonna be uh, repeating. Uh, in this case, we're calling this get get sequence uh, function, and we're passing the the argument three. That function we have it defined down here. It's basically a simple little function that that returns uh, that same u uh, eight multiplied by itself, uh, and we're using here the saturating multiplication just in case. So uh, what this is going to do is going to initialize this array of three elements with the result of that function call. So let's see how that looks here. Let's run this. And effectively, we have this new array A10 with three elements, and all three elements are the number nine, okay? Uh, and that's the result of calling that uh, function get sequence with uh, argument three, okay? So we can use a function to, to set that initial value, and then um, uh, using the repetition operator, um, use that to initialize an array okay and finally uh, we have here two examples of how to define an empty array here we're using uh, the explicit length of zero and we have the empty braces here and here we're uh, letting the compiler uh, determine the length which is going to be zero because we have an empty list okay 
so basically that's uh, pretty much it that uh, the array is a really simple data structure but it's a really useful and powerful data, data structure so let's uh, leave it at that uh, do the builder here I'll see you in the next one